Ali Pierce Scuba Tech Tips on. This uh, particular tech tip is, is another one of our uh, uh, LDS Pro tips. Yeah. Local Dive Store Pro, that's what Kevin calls it. Local Dive Store LDS Pro Tip. <laughs> and what we mean by that very simply is, as we've already done for a couple, is a tip that might be valuable to you folks in the industry. Well, you're a dive store owner, dive store manager, assistant manager, clerk, staff, instructor, whatever. In almost 50 years in the diving industry, many dive stores, many different people, staff, and so on, I have picked up a few tips. In fact, if I may be a bit immodest, uh, I was known as a weird, weird a good word? No, anyway, as I said to a chap the other day, I've had some fantastic ideas. I'm an ideas guy. I've had some fantastic ideas, which I have incorporated into my dive store. And some of those ideas were very successful. <laughs> some were not so successful, so you dropped them. You know, there's no, no shame in that whatsoever. You try things. If you don't try things, you're just a dive store selling fins. Well, there's lots of them. So what I liked to do, my thoughts were, I want to make my dive store unique. I want people to come to my dive store, not to Joe's dive store down the road. How do I do that? You have to offer something that other dive stores do not. And that's the reason for these LDS Pro Tips. Uh, and if there's something in here that you can incorporate into your staff, into your store, whether it's the environment or any of your policies or attitudes that helps you build the business, I'm a happy guy. Okay? Couple of things. Right now, I'm going to talk for just a minute about training. And specifically, I want to talk about staff training. Staff training. Well, okay, what do you mean by staff training? My staff are all scuba divers. You know what? There are more than a few scuba stores I know that have staff working in the scuba store that are not certified divers. Now, I know that sounds pretty weird. It sounds weird to me. Uh, but uh, it, I know it exists. I know it exists. Uh, so I think the first thing you need to do is make sure that your staff is reasonably cognizant about the sport of scuba diving, which means they should be divers. I mean, taking a scuba diving course today in, in, in the 21st century is not a big deal. We're, we're talking a weekend and a couple of dives. So the first thing you need to do is, is get you, make sure your staff is all scuba divers. It's a great sport, first of all. They're bound to enjoy it. And working in the dive store, it just it could not make sense to me to be talking to somebody about taking a scuba diving course and about the program and answering the questions that they're going to have or trying to sell scuba diving equipment and answering the questions they're going to have about the equipment if they're not a diver. They've never been diving. It just doesn't make sense. So that's for the first step, if they're not a diver. Secondly, I always encourage my staff to take additional programs. Encourage them. Now, when I say encourage them, I don't mean beat them up. And I don't mean say you're fired if you don't become a diver. What I mean is make it easy for them. Make it enjoyable. If you have to help them financially, if you have to give it to them free, give them a payment plan, a dollar a week off their paycheck for, you know, the next 50 years, whatever you have to do to encourage them to take those programs, I can pretty much guarantee you that they are going to enjoy it. So right off the bat, it's a big bonus for you. Plus, it makes a much more effective staff. However, there's a couple other quick things I want to share with you. And that is that there's some very sp specific training uh, options for you that you should consider. Let me take one that's important that, uh, that is relatively recent. It used to be when I started in, in the diving business in 69, that somebody would be hired to work in the dive store. They were usually hired because of their looks, as in my case. <laughs> Did you hear something? Anyway, I didn't used to look like this 50 years ago, you know, Kevin. But anyway, <laughs> or their personality, or they were energetic, or they were a diver, whatever they knew. Yeah, yeah, I know about looks, Kevin. So, uh, <laughs> uh, but anyway, for whatever reason, somebody's been hired to work in a dive store. And it used to be then that uh, the first thing, well, let's look at this. Those are masks, and these are snorkels, and we'll get you into a course next weekend. You'll learn all about this stuff. Come on back to the service department. This is where we fix the regs and so on. And here's the compressor. I'll show you how to fill the tank later this afternoon. And the person was hired and became a dive store clerk. And maybe they worked their way up. Maybe they became the assistant manager, the manager, maybe they opened their own dive store. Who knows what the future holds? My point is that at one time it was very casual. The training, learning to work in the diving industry was very casual. There's no formality to it. There was no structure to it. You picked up ideas basically from other staff members or from the manager. 
Specifically, I mentioned about the compressor about filling tanks. It was very common. It's common today. I know it's common today. Think about your own dive star. When you get staff in, new staff or, or, or a brand new diver wants to work on the dive store, sometimes your dive master says, hey, I'm free every Tuesday and Wednesday. I can come to the dive store and help you out. I'd love to do that. I used to hear that a lot. And you get them in, okay, um, well, I got tanks to fill. Come on, I'll show you how to fill tanks. And pretty soon you got the guy filling tanks. Sounds good, doesn't it? No, that's not good. In fact, here in Ontario, and I'm sure there are other jurisdictions, I'm thinking specifically about Florida, California, possibly Texas, certainly New York, places like that, Vancouver, BC, Vancouver, places like that, where, uh, uh, where safety regulations are a paramount factor in everything, there very often are laws, or actually are laws regarding the filling of high pressure cylinders. And here in Ontario, we have that law. You may not know this. Some of you dive store owners may not know this, but you cannot just take someone into your, or to your compressor, teach them how to fill a tank, and then say, okay, you go ahead, you know how to do it. Can't do that. It's against the law. That person has to be trained. Now, it's interesting because there's no training program. They make the legislation and they say, okay, train them, make sure that they're safe, they know what they're doing. Okay, so you have to make up your own training program. Now, for filling a tank, it's not a big deal. You know, start, stop, check the oil, pressure, watch the pressure, fill the tank, that type of do. Lots of people do it. It's easy to teach, it's easy to do. But you need to actually have a short training program. It could be maybe 15, 20 points on a single piece of paper. That's your training program. You go through all of those and make sure that the person understands them. In fact, then you have a practice session. We would call that like pool skills, right? You've done the theory. You know what you're supposed to do. Now show me you can do it. So we do the pool skills, practical portion. So you have a couple of exercises in there. How to start the compressor, how to check the oil, start the compressor, how to check the pressure, how to watch the pressures for the banks, how to open and close them, how to hook the hose up to the tank, how to, all that kind of stuff. There's a practical aspect to it as well. And then, very important, is you need to have some kind of a certification. Yeah, you hear that? You have to have a certification. So you're actually designing a certification program. That's what we did at Scuba 2000 and prior to that at the wet shop and other dive stores and other dive stores are solely but surely catching on. They have their training program for filling a, you, you, filling a scuba tank using a high pressure compressor, a practical portion, and then at the end of all that, a certification. Why give them a certification? That's the proof that you have met the requirement that they be trained. That's proof for you. Hey, they get a nice little wall certificate that says, hey, Joe Diver is now certified to fill scuba tanks on his own at so-and-so dive start. Signed by the owner, signed by you. And maybe even give them a wallet card. Yeah, yeah, I'll give them a little wallet card, laminate it, make them feel good. It's got scuba D or whatever the store name is on it, Joe's Dive Shop on it. It's just certified to fill scuba tanks and the date on there and your signature, laminate it and give it to him. Tell him to carry it around. Now, the reason for that, he makes him feel good. He is certified to fill scuba tanks. Look, there's my wall certificate up on the wall that I see. Right, look, here's my C card. Makes him feel good, okay? Already, it's a bonus for you. Secondly, proof that you have trained him. Proof that he has been trained, which reduces your exposure, liability, uh, in the event there's ever a problem. There are very, very few problems, but heaven forbid, here's insurance, cheap insurance. <laughs> and also, hey, what the heck, now he knows how to do it properly. You know that, he knows that, and, and everything else is done. So there's an example of a very specific training program that you as a dive store owner, manager, ought to be considering. And in some jurisdictions, as in, in Ontario, it is actually required. Now, there are other training programs as well. I won't share them with you now. They're not quite so important as that particular one, but I'll share them with you. Lots of little training programs that you get your staff involved in it. Get them involved in, in setting up the training program. It can be a lot of fun for them. It makes them feel important, and they're part of the operation. And that's all important for good employee relationships. So, there's some ideas for you. Hope that's some, uh, something in there that maybe you guys can, can use. I, I know it's in the dive store we're in right now. At this dive store, has they developed their own regu regulator fundamentals. This is not a patty course. I see they have a patty logo. It's not a patty course. Regulator fundamentals. It's a great little uh, bound book. I mean, these are cheap to make. But some pictures in there about, about different types of valves, uh, regulators, what to do, how they work, and so on. And the person fills out some notes, and he's even a quiz at the back. 
Now this, this is pretty fancy. You know, this fancy for a compressor fill-up, but it's a great idea. I'm not sure if the Dastor owner charges for this program or he offers it as a bonus. Give them a bonus. Yeah. They want a pay raise. And you say, wow, well, gosh, you know, we can't really afford a pay raise at this point. But I was thinking that I would put you into our regulator fundamentals training program at no cost. How does that sound? Hey, yeah. <laughs> Some ideas. Maybe there's something in there for you. You guys in the business, you take care. Good luck. We have a whole new year starting, and it's going to be a great year for the diving business. Talk to you soon. Alec Pierce Scuba.